What's up you guys? It's Pokegirl7 here and today I'm going to be ranking all Gen 5 Pokemon. So it's not going to be just the Gen 5 Pokemon that have been released in Pokemon Go already. It's going to be the Unova region as a whole and these rankings aren't really going to be based on statistics or anything like that. It's more so just my personal opinion because here's the thing. Everybody always hates on Gen 5. They say the Unova region is the worst region for Pokemon and while I do kind of agree with that, I don't think it's the best by any means. It might actually be the worst region. Region. It's still amazing and has a bunch of Pokemon that I really like and I want to show my love for Gen 5 in today's video and I thought it would be kind of fitting since Gen 5 is being released slowly in Pokemon Go right now. You guys can kind of get an idea of which Gen 5 Pokemon I like and don't like and maybe some of this is going to be based around statistics as well. Like I said, most of it's going to be about personal opinion but we might throw in some statistics there too. But either way, I think it'll be really fun to just rank them. Uh, we're using the tier list maker. I really like to use this. I've made a video with this before. I think I ranked shinies in Pokemon Go or something with this. So it's a really cool uh, website to use. So yeah, I guess let's jump into this and rank all of the Gen 5 Pokemon. This might take a while. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So I think there's 156 Pokemon in the Unova region total. So this video might take forever to finish, but we're going to go ahead and get started. So I guess I'm going to go in order. Um, it seems like they put Victini at the top of the list. I'm not going to rank Victini until towards the end. I'm going to start with a start Pokemon. So let's start off with Snivy, the grass type starter Pokemon. I'm easily going to put this into the A tier. That's another thing guys, the, the way this tier list works is you rank it from gross all the way up to S, which is like satisfactory, which is the best. So S is the best, gross is the worst, and everything in between is in between. So that's how that works. So Snivy I think would be on the A tier. Servine is going to be in the A tier as well and ooh, Superior I think is going to be in the A tier too. I know it's weird to put the entire family all in the same tier but I feel like they all just belong there. I really like this family of Pokemon. Next up we have Tepig. I do like Tepig but not as much as Snivy. I'm going to put it in the B tier but then we get to Pig Knight. Guys, I don't like Pig Knight. I think it's very ugly. Um, ugh, I, something about him just like rubs me the wrong way. I'm gonna put it in the E tier. It's not horrible. It's not F or gross, but it's close. And then we have Embor. Embor is really hard. Oh, this is kind of the same thing as Pig Knight. I'm gonna put it in the E tier. It's not the worst, but something about it makes me feel weird. Then we have Oshawott. Okay, guys. One of the reasons people don't like the Gen 5 region that much is because the starters aren't the best. Snipey is the only one I really like that much. Um, Oshawa is probably going to be on the E tier as well. Something about it is just really goofy. Next up is Dewat. Dewat is a little bit better than Oshawa in my opinion. I'm going to put it in the D tier. And then we have Samurott. I think Samurott is probably one of the worst final evolutions ever. I'm going to have to put it in the F tier. Um, it's not a bad Pokemon by any means statistically, but when it comes to the design, I really don't like it. I guess we could say this video is mostly going to be based around the designs of the Pokemon, but statistics will come into play a little bit. But for me, if I don't like the design of a Pokemon, I usually won't use it very much in a playthrough. Even if it's really good, most of the time, it has to at least look decent for me to use it. Next up is Patrat. Patrat is, I guess, on like the D tier. Nothing special about it. Watchhog, pretty ugly. We're gonna put it in the E tier. E. It's one of those Pokemon I never really use. Like I said, I don't like to use Pokemon that don't look very good and uh, it's just never been that special anyway. <laughs> now we have Lillipup. Lillipup is very cute. It's not like the best Pokemon to use by any means, of course. It's one of the early game normal types, so I'm gonna put it in the C tier. Next up we have Herdeer. Herdeer is basically gonna be in the C tier as well. It's a pretty cute Pokemon, but other than that, I don't see myself using this one very much. And then Stoutland. Stoutland is a little bit better since it's the final evolution, and it's still pretty cool, so I'm gonna put it in the B tier. Purloin. I love Purloin. It's cute. It's a dark type. I really like it. I'm going to put it in the B tier. And then Lipard is my queen. She's actually a pretty decent Pokemon. She gets overlooked a lot. I'm going to put it in ooh, A or B. That one's really hard. Still the B tier, honestly. Um, it's almost in the A tier for me, but I'm going to leave it a B. Next up is Pan Sage, the grass monkey. That funky monkey. I don't hate the monkey Pokemon. I think C is fine for that. And same goes for Sage as well. 
honestly, all of the elemental monkeys can go into the C tier. I think they're all pretty cool. Um, I don't hate them. A lot of people dislike them, but I don't really have a problem with them. Next up, we have Muna and Musharna. I never really care for these Pokemon that much. They're not bad, so I'm going to throw them in the D tier. Next up is Pidove. Pidove is the most basic, boring Pokemon ever. I hate to be this way, but I'm going to have to throw it in the F tier, y'all. It's not ugly or gross or anything like that, but come on. Come on, it's not a good Pokemon. Tranquil is basically the same, it's in the D tier as well. And then we have Unpheasant, both forms. Um, I'll just put them in the E tier instead of F just because they're a little bit better statistically to use. Next up we have Blitzel. I love Blitzel. I really like electric type Pokemon. I love the zebra design. I'm going to put it in the A tier and same thing goes for Zeb Strika. I love these Pokemon and they have an amazing design. Ooh, next up is Rog and Rolla and its whole family. I love these Pokemon. I'm going to put Rog and Rolla in the B tier because it's cute but not very useful. Then we're going to put Boldor in the B tier as well. But Gigalith is going into the S tier. I love this Pokemon. I use it in every playthrough that it's been available in. I love it so much. Gigalith is definitely S tier material. And then we have Woobat and Swoobat. I think these Pokemon are pretty annoying and not my favorite by any means. So I'm gonna put them in um, either E or F. They're not horrible. I'll put them in the E tier. Something about them just never interested me very much. Then we have Drill Bear. I don't really like Drill Bear as much as most people. Uh, something about it never really um, sparked joy or anything so i'm going to put it in the d tier but i will say exadrill is actually a pretty good pokemon especially like in pokemon go so i'm going to put it in the a tier next up is audino uh i don't know how i feel about this one i'm gonna i'm so sorry for that that was just I, i'm so sorry let's forget that happened anyways let's put audino in the the E tier. I just don't really care for this Pokemon. E. Ooh, next up we have Timber, Girder, and Conkledur. Timber is definitely B tier because it's cute, not very strong. It's like the Machop of this generation. And then we have Girder who can go into the B tier as well. Pretty good Pokemon. Then we have Conkledur. Conkledur is going into the S tier because it's like the Machamp of this generation. It almost has the same exact stats as Machamp. It's a great Pokemon, and if you want it in Pokemon Go, definitely go for it. It's a great Pokemon to use in the game. It actually just came out in Pokemon Go. That's definitely one that you want to try to get in the Pokedex. Next up, we have Timpole. Timpole is really cute, but nothing is really very special about it, so let's put it in the D tier. Then we have Palpatode. It's kind of in the same thing as the D tier, and Seismitoad is a pretty decent one. I'm going to put it in the C tier. Next up, we have Throw and Sock. Guys, these are the new regionals in Pokemon Go. <sighs> I hate these Pokemon. They're going in the gross tier. I don't know what it is, but these two Pokemon always made me feel so uncomfortable. Something about them are just weird and bulky and bleh. I don't like them. They're definitely gross. Sorry. <laughs> Next up is Sawaddle. I think Sawaddle has a really cool design. It's a bug and grass type Pokemon, which is pretty cool. You don't really see that all that much anymore. So, uh, let's see here. B tier, because I really like the design. Next up is Swadloon. Let's go ahead and put it in the B tier as well. Actually, I'm going to put it in the C tier, because I like its design a little bit less. And then we have Leavenie, which is going to go in the B tier as well. And next is Venipede. It's pretty cool, but not all that special. It's going to go in the D tier. Then we have Whirlipede. Whirlipede is awesome. I'm putting it in the B tier. And then Scoliopede is going into the A tier. I think it's a really cool Pokemon. Cottony is cute, but nothing about it is really all that great. Um, I don't know. I guess it's more of a... It's between C and D. It's kind of cute, so therefore I like it. So I'm going to put it in the C tier. Then we have Whimsicott. Whimsicott basically goes into the C tier as well. Petalil. Petalil is kind of cute, kind of plain. Let's put it in the D tier. We have Lilligant. Lilligant is beautiful. I'm going to put her in the C. All right, next up is Red and Blue Stripe Basculin. They're kind of both in the same uh, category. You can't really pick between them. And I basically feel the same about both of them. Uh, they're decent, but nothing about them is that special. They could disappear and I wouldn't really care. That's kind of sad. <laughs> So I'm going to put them in the E tier. All right, now we have Sandile. I love this evolutionary family. Uh, Sandile is going to go in the D tier because it's a little plain. Then we have Croco Rock. He's looking pretty epic with those sunglasses. He's got his arms crossed like he don't care. He's going to go in the B tier. And then we have Crocodile, guys. Crocodile is going into the S tier. It's an awesome dark type Pokemon. If you play Pokemon Go, it's going to be a great one whenever it does come out. I don't think it's out yet, 
but it's definitely going to be one of those top dark types to use in the game. And just overall, in all of Pokemon, it's a really awesome one. I love this guy. And now we have Darumaka. Darumaka is pretty cute. Kind of weird, but still cute. It's in the B tier. And then Darmanitan is kind of weird. Something about it always threw me off. I like Darumaka more than Darmanitan. So, ooh, this is a hard one. I'm starting to realize I kind of want to put it in the E tier. I really don't like Darmanitan that much. That's kind of sad. I will say I really like the Galarian Darmanitan more than the original. Okay, next is Maractus. This is also another new regional Pokemon in Pokemon Go. I really like the look of this Pokemon. I don't know how useful it is statistically, but when I'm going by just the design, I'm gonna put it in the B tier. I think it looks pretty awesome. Next up we have Dwebble. Dwebble is getting ranked solely on its cuteness. I love this Pokemon. It's definitely in the A tier. I don't care if it's a useless piece of garbage. I love it. Next up is Crustle. I like Crustle too, a little bit less than Dwebble. It's going into the B tier. Guys, I just realized this is pretty crazy. What a judgmental video. Imagine being a Pokemon and someone ranking you and telling you if you're gross or not. Like, come on. I feel like some sort of like weird overlord judging these creatures. Like, I'm your god now. Next up is Scraggy. Scraggy is kind of weird, kind of awkward. I'm going to put it in the D tier. Next up is Scrafty. Scrafty's a little bit better in my opinion. I'm going to put it in the C tier. Next up is Sigalith. I think Sigalith is a really interesting Pokemon. It has a very cool design. It's going in the B tier. Next up is Yamask. I love Yamask and its origin story. I think it's so cool and kind of creepy and kind of sad in a way. And then Cofagrigus. I have such a hard time saying that Pokemon's name. It's going into the S tier because it's one of my favorite of this generation. You guys know I love my ghost types. Next up is Turtoga. This actually just came out in Pokemon Go. It's a pretty cool Pokemon. I'm going to put it in the C tier. And then Caracosta is going into the B tier. I will say that these are two very forgettable Pokemon. I forget about them all the time, but they're not that bad when I actually sit down and think about it. Next up is Arkin. I love Arkin. It reminds me weirdly of a Porygon. Like its face is kind of Porygon-ish, but I don't know what it is about it. It always reminded me of like a rock type Porygon. So I'm gonna put it in the A tier because I really like its design. And then we have Archeops as well in the A tier. Almost in the S tier though, but it's gonna be in the A tier. I really like this uh, evolutionary family. I think those are just some really cool Pokemon that get overlooked a lot. They're very beautiful, have really cool designs. Yeah, they definitely belong in the A tier. Next up we have Trubbish, okay? I like Trubbish, guys. Everyone hates Trubbish, but I like Trubbish because he's relatable. He is trash, but at least he's kind of cute, right? So we're gonna put him in the A tier. I really love Trubbish. And same thing goes for Garbodor. Um, I like it a little bit less than Trubbish because it kind of loses the cuteness, but he's a big scary trash monster. So can't we all relate to that every now and then? So he's gonna be in the B tier. Next up we have Zorua. I never knew how to say this Pokemon's name. Is it Zora, Zorua? Either way, it's pretty cute. I'm gonna put it in the B tier. And then we have Zororark. Zororark is going into the S tier. One of the coolest designs in Gen 5 and it's a really good dark type as well. When this comes out in Pokemon Go, you guys definitely want to get your hands on one of these. Then we have Minchino. It's cute and all, but I kind of forget about it a lot, so it's going to go in the D tier. And same thing goes for Sinchino. I never really think about it, so D tier it is. Then we have Gothita. This line is one of my favorite lines, especially in this generation. So Gothita is going to be in the B tier. It's pretty cute. And then we have Gotharita, which is my queen. I love her so much. She's going to go into the A tier, actually. And guys, you guessed it. Gothitelle is going into the S tier. If I can get it all the way up there. Oh my goodness, my list is getting full. Gothitelle goes in the S tier, guys. I love her. She's my psychic type queen. And she's just a really cool Pokemon overall. I love the whole gothic look. Of course, I'm going to put her in the S tier. Hello, is anybody surprised? Next up is Solosis. This is a very forgettable Pokemon. I'm going to put it in the E tier. Same thing goes for Duosion. And then Runiclus is a little bit cooler. I'm going to put it in the D tier. I don't know. I just don't really like these Pokemon. I never really did. I like the concept of what they are, but something about them never really interested me, and they're super forgettable. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below if you feel that way about these Pokemon. Then we have Ducklet. Ducklet's cute, but forgettable. So D, and then Swanna is also, honestly, Swanna might be an E tier. I really never cared for this Pokemon. Oh no, guys, now we're at Vanillite, okay? <laughs> 
everyone hates vanilla they're like it's just an ice cream cone there's nothing special about that pokemon it's just plain game freaks running out of ideas all this stuff listen guys i love ice cream I love ice cream cones and I like the fact that vanilla is an ice cream cone and it's really cute and it's probably tasty. So we're going to put it in the A tier. Vanillish is going into the A tier as well and so is Vanillux guys. I am not playing. I love these Pokemon. And now we have Deerling. What an adorable Pokemon. It was actually in the Christmas loading screen for Pokemon Go so I'm assuming it's coming out soon. So, I'm going to put Deerling in the B tier just because of its cuteness. Now we have Saucebuck in all of its different forms. Uh, I kind of feel the same way about all of its forms, so I'm going to put it in the B tier as well. I can't wait for Deerling to come out in Pokemon Go. I'm very curious to see how they release all of the different forms. Uh, it should be exciting, so let's put all of those in the B tier. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, I really like this form of Saucebuck the most. I'm putting it in the A tier just because it's a little bit better. Just by the looks, I mean. I don't really know statistically, but I like the way it looks a lot. Now we have Emolga, the electric rodent of this generation. I'm going to put it in the B tier because of its cuteness. Then we have Carablast. Ooh, I don't like Carablast. It's gross. It's ugly. Ew, get it out of my face. And then we have Escavalier, who is better than Carablast by far. I'm going to put it in the C tier. Next up is Fungus. I really like the idea around Fungus. It's a Pokeball mushroom. I mean, that's pretty cool. It's just not very good of a Pokemon in my opinion, so I'm going to put it in the D tier. Same thing goes for Amoongus. I think their names are weird. Fungus, Amoongus, like something about it's just like, come on, let's tone it down a little bit with the dad jokes. Next up is Frillish. I guess it's going to be both of the Frillish forms, the pink and the blue, male and female. So I like these Pokemon. They're water ghost type, which is pretty cool. You never really see that. So I'm going to put it in the D tier. I was about to do C. Then again, I, even though they're ghost types, they're kind of those ghost types that I forget about a lot. So they're going to be in the D tier. Same thing goes for Jellicent. It's just not really that special to me. Next up is Alomomola. I never really knew how to say that Pokemon's name. It should be a Love Disc Evolution, but it's not. I don't know why it never was, but it's not. But anyways, this Pokemon's cool because it's heart-shaped and kind of pretty. Um, other than that, I probably would never use this Pokemon in a playthrough whatsoever. <laughs> so I think I'm going to put it in the C tier just because I like the look of it. Next up is Joltik, the tiny little spider boy. He's going to go in the C tier because of its cuteness. And then Garvantula is going to be in the C tier as well because he's pretty badass. I like the way it looks. Next up is Ferrisseed. I don't like Ferrisseed. It's going to go into the gross tier. I'm sorry, Ferrisseed fans. I will say Ferrothorn is a little bit cooler. I'll put him in the C tier. I really like the way it looks, but Pharisee is just weird and like, I don't know what it is about it. I just never liked it. Next up we have Clink. A lot of people hate on Clink because it's like the Gen 5 version of Magnemite, Magneton, that sort of thing. I don't know how I feel about that, but it never really interested me that much. So I'm going to put it in the E tier. Same thing goes for Clink Clink and uh, whatever the final evolution's name is, I actually don't even remember. It's Clink, Clink Clink, and what? Clink Clang Clong? No, I'm just kidding, guys. I actually don't remember this Pokemon's name. That's proof that it should be in the, the E tier for sure. <laughs> e. Oh, it's Clink and then Clang and then Clink Clang. Wow, super original and creative, guys, right? Next up, we have Tynamo. I forgot this Pokemon existed. Uh, gross tier. Sorry. Electric is pretty cool, but kind of ugly. He's going to go in the F tier. Electros is okay. He's okay. Just okay though. We'll put him in the D tier. It's actually a pretty good electric type Pokemon and its design isn't all that bad. And it has a pretty cool shiny too. Next up is Elgim. Uh, I don't hate this Pokemon and it has a pretty cool design, but I will say I forget this one exists a lot. I'm, I'm starting to notice a theme with Gen 5. I just forget these Pokemon exist. Then we have Behem. Behem is basically the same case. I mean, I don't hate it, but I just forgot it existed. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and people all around the nation and all around the world. We are at Litwick, Lampent, and Chandelure. You guys know where I'm putting these Pokemon, right? You guys know. Uh, Litwick is going into the A tier. I gotta do a little scroll here. Litwick is going into the, wait, I forgot I have an S tier. Litwick is going in the S tier. Lampent is going into the A tier, or maybe even the B tier, just because it's like not as cool of a design. Um, yeah, B tier. And then Chandelure, y'all already know what's up. Oh my god, this is getting really hard to do, by the way. I have to like scroll up really far. Okay, 
S tier for Chandelure. Do I have to really say anything? Uh, it might be one of the best ghost type Pokemon ever created. So it definitely belongs in the S tier. I love my ghost types. I love this evolutionary line. And sorry to Limpent for being in the B tier, but Litwick and Chandelure are two awesome Pokemon. I do wish they would have came up with a better middle evolution. For some reason, I never really cared about Lampent as much, but that's okay. Next up, we have Axu, one of the fan favorites. This actually just came out in Pokemon Go, and it's like the rare pseudo-legendary dragon type of the Unifa region. So it's pretty awesome Pokemon. It's really cute. I'm gonna put it in the B tier because it's not my favorite. Like, I don't like it as much as other people do but I do like it still. Then we have Fracture, which I feel like it's one of those weird middle evolutions that doesn't really have a great design. It's not bad by any means, but I'm gonna put it in the C tier. But guys, don't get it twisted, okay? We're putting Haxorus in the S tier. I love this Pokemon. It has one of the coolest designs ever. Of course, this is very basic of me as a Pokemon fan. Like, it seems like everyone loves Haxorus, but it really is an awesome dragon type attacker. It's gonna be great in Pokemon Go. I don't have it in Pokemon Go yet. Uh, it's pretty rare. You gotta hatch 10 kilometer eggs or find a really rare Axie spawn in the wild. But uh, I can't wait to get mine because it's going to be an awesome dragon type attacker. So I love Haxorus in the main series and in Pokemon Go. It's a great Pokemon. And that design is amazing too. Like don't get it twisted guys. That's an awesome design. Next up is Cupchu. It's very cute with its little ice booger. I'm going to put it in the B tier because of its cuteness. And then we have Bear Tick which can go in the B tier as well. I always really like these two Pokemon. I kind of have a soft spot in my heart for ice type Pokemon. So I really like these two. Then we have Cryvergonal. I think Cryvergonal is over looked a lot. It has a really cool design. It's a freaking snowflake with a face. Like a lot of people think that's not creative at all, but I think it's beautiful. Um, it does receive a lot of hate. I noticed when it came out in Pokemon Go, people were like, what is this? But it's pretty cool. I'm going to put it in the C tier. Then we have Shelmet. Shelmet is just kind of weird and forgettable and I just don't really like it that much. I'm going to put it in the E tier. E. Then we have Aesilgore. Aesilgore is weird looking. I'm probably saying its name wrong. I don't like this Pokemon at all. I'm actually going to put it... We'll put it in the, the E tier with Shelmet. Next up is Stunfisk. I'm sorry, Stunfisk fans. We're putting it in the gross tier. I never understood this Pokemon. I don't like it. I know there's fish like this in real life that are like flat like that and they dig up under the sand and hide. I get that this is a real thing, but I personally am offended by the design of Sunfisk. I'm sorry. It did get a Galarian form, which is kind of cool. It's a little bit better than the original in my opinion, but who asked for that? Who out there asked for a Galarian Sunfisk? Who are you? I just want to talk for a minute. I just want to talk, that's all. Next up is Minfu. I like this Pokemon, but I like its evolution more. It's a pretty cool one though, so I'm gonna put it in the B tier. And then we have Minxiao. Minxiao is going to be a really good fighting type Pokemon for Pokemon Go. Of course, it slaps in the main series. I'm going to put it in the A tier. The reason it's not in the S tier is because I don't like its design all that much. I get what they were going for. It kind of has like the Chinese fighting look. I like it, but it's not S tier for me. It's just A tier because it's a really solid fighting type Pokemon. Next up, we have my boy Dredgigon. Dredgigon gets forgotten about. No one ever talks about this Pokemon. I didn't realize it existed until I played Pokemon Sun and Moon. It's really crazy. I did not know it existed in the Gen 5 region. It took me two more generations to even find out this Pokemon existed and I was like this is such a cool Pokemon. I love its design. I think it's so cool. It has really cool colors. The uh, shiny is awesome as well. It's very nice. So I'm going to put Dredgigon in the B tier because it could be a better Pokemon all around, but its design is awesome, guys. We need to be talking about this one more, okay? Next up is Golit. Golit is cool and all. He's a ghost type, but he's not, like, special, really, so he's gonna be in the D tier. And then Golurk. I actually really like Golurk because I like ghost types, but still, for some reason, he's kind of just in the C tier for me. This is one of those ghost types that I never really got that into for some reason, but I do like it, but I will say I've never even used it in a playthrough. The only thing I've used it in is Pokemon Go, so that's pretty weird. Next up is Ponyard. Ponyard is pretty cool, so I'm gonna put it in the C tier. And then Bisharp, I love Bisharp. I think it has a really cool design. So I'm gonna put it up in the B tier. Next up is Buffalant. Buffalant is definitely overlooked. It's kind of like the Gen 5 Tauros, or at least that's what people say about it. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. In my opinion, it's not that cool. Um, it's another really forgettable one, and I don't like its design that much, so we're going to put it in the E tier. It's not so bad to be an F or gross, but meh. 
Next up is Rufflet. I think it's pretty cute. Doesn't really stand out that much though. Uh, D tier it is. Then we have Braviary. I love Braviary. I love that it's like an eagle and it's red, white, and blue. It's a very American Pokemon. So I'm going to put it in the B tier actually. Next up is Vullaby. I always thought this Pokemon was really weird. And same thing goes for Mandibuzz. Like, I don't know what it is about them. I don't like the whole like, um, I don't know, kind of like Flintstones vibes. I don't know what it is. I don't really like the prehistoric look. Is that what you call that? I don't know. Something about it's just strange to me. Next up is Heatmore. Sadly, I always thought Heatmore was really weird. So it's going to go in the F tier. Um, it's pretty cool in Pokemon Go because it's regional and it makes it kind of more exciting or rare to find. But other than that, it's F tier. And then we have Durant. Kevin Durant himself, y'all. Um, I like it more than Heatmore. It's kind of like the counterpart to Heatmore. Um, Let's see, I'm gonna put it in the D tier. It doesn't stand out a lot, but it's not the worst. Next up is Dino. I really like this line. I'm gonna put that in the C tier. Then we have Zwilius, so that's gonna go in the C tier as well. But then we have Hydreigon. I think Hydreigon is B tier. I know I should probably put it in the A tier. Most people probably would put this Pokemon in the A tier. But for me, I was always more of a Haxorus kind of girl for the dragon type of this region. So um, I don't know what it is about this one. I just don't like it as much as the others. It's almost A tier, but realistically, I never use this much. So I'm going to have to put it in the B tier just because of that. Oh, and I actually just realized now we're down to mythical and legendary Pokemon. So guys, I'm actually thinking about doing a video for mythical and legendary Pokemon separately. So let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see something like that. Make sure you hit the like button on this video. That way I know you like it and I should do it again. I would like to make a separate video for those because there's a lot of legendary and mythical Pokemon in this generation and also like Kyurem and Zekrom have like different forms and stuff so I need to make sure I get all of that in the same list so I think that should be a list all on its own. All right guys so those are all of my opinions on all of the Gen 5 Pokemon. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you agree with my list if you think I'm completely crazy and my list is horrible. Let's do a quick scan through before we end the video. So we have Gigalith, Conkledurr, Crocodile, Cofagurgus, uh, Zorark, Gothitelle, Litwick, Chandelure, and Haxorus in the S tier. So those are like my favorite of this generation apparently. I never really sat back and looked at all of my favorites, but apparently that's what they are. And then my least favorite of this generation are Throw, Sock, Carablast, Ferrisseed, Tinna, I don't even remember this Pokemon's name anymore, and then Stunfisk. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. So yeah, like I said, let me know in the comments down below what your opinions are. Hit the like button if this is something that you enjoy and if you want to see the mythical and legendary video. And yeah, I guess I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video right here. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you smash that like button. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel to join my Gengar gang and I will see you on the next video. Bye!